Hello everybody, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are joining from. Thanks for being here. Um, welcome to a bit of an unusual live stream, surprise, surprise live stream from a new location. Nice to see everybody here. Um, sorry for the lack of the countdown music. I don't quite have that part figured out on the, uh, on the Yolo Box rig yet, but we'll get to that. In the meantime, welcome, thanks for joining. I am at the Inix 3D office in Bratislava, Slovakia, and been enjoying um, my brief little visit here so far, but we are gonna go take a tour in a minute. And um, we're gonna take a tour of, of this place. This is where the stands that I've been developing are made. These are where they are printed and shipped out from. So we're going to take a look around. It's a bit of a, a, bit of a mess back here. We've got some fun stuff to look at and some uh, new things to look at too. So we're gonna take a look at what goes on here. You can probably hear the printers running right now. So those are all hard at work making some of the products that are gonna be shipping out soon. And uh, take a look at the boxing, packing, boxing, boxing station back there. And then um, a little sneak peek of some of the new stuff that we've been working on here. I've also got a, um, of course, I've brought my, my little portable yellow box rig with me. So let's, yeah. Let's uh, take a look at that. That is what I am looking at right now. So that is the cage with the, the ZV-1 on top of it and a couple of cameras plugged in, the wireless rig. We'll take a look around with this camera and hopefully actually switch over to the slightly better microphone on this. Um, speaking of sound, I forgot my wireless microphones at the Airbnb. So uh, what I would have like to do was wear one of the Rode Wireless Go's that I brought with me and instead I just completely left it at the Airbnb. So this is actually the built-in mic on the ZV-1 that you're listening to me from and then thankfully they had a Rode shotgun uh, or on-camera mic here. So we'll use this as I walk around the studio. Um, speaking of which, I actually just realized I should probably turn this around so that I'm talking at the microphone while I walk around and not talking behind the microphone as I walk around. So we're just gonna rotate that. But let's take a look at what we've got in the chat so far. Uh, yeah, what are you using for sound? I am using, yeah, this right now is the built-in Sony uh, ZV-1 microphone and you probably got a nice stereo effect of printers from that direction and stuff, but it works, it works. The, yes, this is where the magic happens. Uh, and I'm actually streaming on the Yolo Box today directly from that to YouTube. I was having some issues with my setup because my, guess what? My Mac crashed uh, at home and I can't really get it back from here. So uh, we're just going straight from here to the to YouTube because if I don't have the ability to show my chat comments, not much point in me streaming through that rig. <laughs> good, I'm glad the built-in mic is is good. So, okay, yeah, thanks, thanks everybody for joining. Uh, how excited am I here to, am I to be there, asks Keith. I'm very excited. Um, I've only ever seen this place on video calls before, so it's nice to actually be here in person and see what it actually looks like and get a better sense of the space. I'll try to do a good job of representing what the space feels like as we walk around here in a minute. So, yeah, straight to YouTube, old school streaming, says John. Exactly, yeah. Well, and this is the comment overlay built into the Yolo box too. I figured might as well give a, uh, give a good test of all of the features and streaming directly from the Yolo box. So it's a, it's, it's a good excuse. The auto login isn't working as tested. It might be. I actually set it up to reboot every night so that it's just always logging in and it was working for a couple days. Um, but then it wasn't on right now. And then of course, since I, it wasn't in my checklist, I forgot to double check it before I was, as I was setting up. So <laughs> John says, I'll swing by your office and restart the Mac if needed. I mean, you're about as far away from it as I am right now. So I'm not sure if that's really going to work, but you know, if you do want to fly over to the, uh, over to the other side of the world, you are welcome to. MCO Group says, I got my PK1 made in that factory two days ago by DHL. Super efficient. I know, DHL, I feel like, is the only one that has not been completely falling over with their shipping times. They've been doing a very good job of actually staying 
pretty much on schedule. Uh, I think we're doing three day shipping from here most places. So they've been, they've been good about it. How do you choose what question from the chat to put in the overlay? So it's actually just built into the yellow box. I'll show you what it looks like. It looks like uh, this. this is, these are the questions that I'm seeing. So I just tap one and then it shows it up on, on the stream. So it works great. Uh, maybe you could swing by my office instead. I think I might be able to on the next trip, actually. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. That's enough of that. Um, let's take a look at... Take a look at what we've got on this desk. Um, there's a couple things behind me that I want to show before we get into the printer room. So if you paid attention to my last video, you may have seen this on the back shelf of the video, but this is a, another new stand that we are working on. This is for the A10 Mini, and it has two aluminum bars on the back. So same style as the Yolo Box cage but for the ATEM and it does like sit on a desk but it's more meant for like bolting to tripods and stuff because you can go you can put the same tripod plate that the Yola box has down there oh this one so if you attach this one down there then you can bolt this whole thing to a tripod and the metal bars on the top I'm really excited that we can actually do this now because I didn't think it was possible to do this when I first started designing these but essentially it makes them ridiculously strong, ridiculously strong. So like this is not gonna bend, there's nothing you can do to bend this. And um, this is also very strong vertically. So you were what, you were standing on these, right? Yeah, so you can, you can not that I would recommend it, but you can stand on this uh, and it will not collapse. So you can put definitely any kind of monitor you want, no problem anymore, so that is cool. And yes, there's a little attachment for a Raspberry Pi on the bottom here on this one. And, um, we also have one for the big one, the big one, the extreme. So same idea, uh, same style really. And then it is aluminum bar on the bottom and on the back. Same idea. You could attach this to a tripod, but I think that would be weird. I don't think it makes a lot of sense to put this on a tripod just cause it's kind of a big device. But you can definitely attach all sorts of things to the top now with these uh, screws. There's like, you can put these little, um, I don't know if you can see it like flying by there, but you can put these little nuts in the track and then you can attach stuff into those nuts. Ah, look at that. So we've got like, well, it doesn't go this way, but it would go like on the back. So these little wire managers, so you can run wires through them. Um, you can put, where's this little cold shoe? So a little cold shoe goes into the track like that and then um, screws in from the top into that nut that you can kind of see floating there. So yeah, I'm excited about this because it's, it's, nice, it's a nice solid um, upgrade from the, the other design. So these are um, coming out very, very soon. We've been slowly, slowly working on the new, on the new designs. So um, that is that is nuts. <laughs> um, JT says the wire managers use the drop in T nuts. Yeah, either way, well, either way is fine. The uh, the wire manager, if you if you use the drop in nuts, I had some around here. They are the small ones, and they so these are the ones that slide in and. There we go. These are the ones that slide into the track. You can see they're wide. And then these are the ones that drop in. And you can see how small they are like that. So the nice thing about the ones that slide in is you, uh, you'll you never lose them because they can't come out once they're in the track. So once they're, once they're in the little, uh, in the track, they, there is no way out once it's capped on both ends. Uh, the drop in ones, the they can come out, they, they fall out, but that's also by design because that way you drop them in uh, so you don't need to take off the ends if you want to add more stuff. So that, that's uh, why we use two different styles. So it makes sense for the wire manager to choose if you want them or not, but having the slide-in ones are nice for the um, tripod plate that you're like always going to want. And um, 
that goes for the Yule box and the ATEM stands just as well. So I've got the, like on this rig, I've got the um, slide in nuts holding that little small rig monitor mount there. And that is um, what we're looking at here. Oh, and I've got it being handed to me, a mock-up. This is like a slide in. half, I don't know why this one's chopped in half. But so we can, this, show, them. So we can show how it works. <laughs> this, is, um, this is how it works. So it's the slide in nut on the bottom there. And then this just bolt, these are replacement bolts for it, but they attach into the slide in nuts. And then this is a nice piece to add to the top of either the ATEM or the Yola box, really. Um, yeah, so uh, other questions? Um, the new version is coming out at the end of the month, so we're almost there, but we are trying to, well, they're printing right now, so I'll go show you what the printers look like that are cranking them out. We try to print them a, uh, print a bunch ahead of time so that they can get shipped to the local distributors, that way they can get shipped to you faster. So the whole idea is like, we can ship from this room to anywhere in the world, like that is fine, and it's DHL three-day shipping, and if your order's over 100, they'll pay for the shipping for you, so it's free shipping. Um, but it's often faster to get it from somewhere even more local, so we have distributors that will have batches of them waiting at a local place so that you can get it from them. So if you're in the US, uh, you can just buy from the US sellers, um, and hopefully they have stock in them, hopefully they've ordered enough to make sure there's stock so that they will be able to ship directly from there. Uh, but like I said, if they are out of stock because everybody's already bought up their stock, you can order from here and it will be free shipping over a hundred dollars. So um, that's, that's the idea there. Is it possible to have the sides in a color other than white? Yes. So we are doing um, a couple different color options for the different stands. The yellow box one is the red and black. And then the ATEM we're doing white and black. Uh, so that's the, um, yeah, those are the, White and black options for both of the ATEM Mini and Extreme. Uh, Rick says, I like the Raspberry Pi attachment. Always wish your original design had such attachments as for accessories like USB power outlets, etc. Yeah, my the original idea with the first design I did was that the screw holes and the cold shoes would give you enough mounting points to be able to add other sort of out-of-the-box things that I didn't design. And um, the cold shoes, I think, were a, a good, that was, a, that was successful, but the screw holes didn't pan out quite the way, the way I wanted it to. So I like the, um, the, the slide in nuts now as a, another way to just add a bunch of screw holes wherever you want. Um, <laughs> Christopher says, would you then turn your ATEM white to somehow match the white stand? You could, you definitely could. I've seen some white spray on rubber, which is kind of neat. I don't know if I'd recommend that. Uh, there is someone trying to get work done in the background. Are you sitting in their seat? Um, are you seeing a reflection somewhere? <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, scrolling through the comments here, and then we're going to go take a look around. Oh, no. <laughs> um, MCO Group says, will you offer an upgrade price to the new version for uh, those who own the old one? Ooh. Oh, I'm getting a nod from over here. Yes, that's a good idea. We'll figure that out. I don't know the details on it yet. Uh, we will figure that out. This, uh, so the, the, it's not meant to be a complete replacement for the, for the other one, because it is quite a bit different. And this is gonna be a lot more expensive than the, the old one, just because it is quite a lot different. And it uses these metal bars, which are um, a whole process to put together. So the prices of this and the original stand are different, and we are still gonna be selling both of them. Um, but yeah, we'll work out some sort of upgrade plan for, for people who have bought one recently, but, um, these are not actually out yet. Still two, what day is today? Two weeks? Yeah. Sounds about right. Um, do you have any frames or cages to mount the yellow box in the small portable teleprompter? Not at the moment, but that is a great suggestion. MT says maybe a limited edition in purple. I'm sure Petra would love it. I don't know if we have purple in the right material. That's the only trick. Because this is not just like, we don't, yeah. Because this isn't like, this is not PLA. This is not just regular, the cheap stuff that I use for the prototypes at home. 
So this is um, very, very different, which only comes in special colors. Um, Kevin says, will you ship to Ireland? Absolutely. You, um, from here. So uh, we, yeah, you can definitely order. Basically think of inix 3 d the EU store, as like the, the default, like the main store. So if, if the other ones don't have it for whatever reason, or can't ship to your country for whatever reason, EU store, the inix 3 d EU store can always ship anywhere. So you just may be able to, to have it with less fuss and faster from the local distributors, which is why we have the local distributors. Um, Bailey says, do you buy the aluminum extrusion and then cut it in house or do they order it pre-cut? Ooh, when we go look around, we'll, we'll take a look because there is a tool here that is part of the process. So we'll, we'll take a look at that. Um, okay, so we got a good crew here. Let's go, uh, let's go take a look at the rooms around here. And I'm going to swap over to the other camera audio, that way you can hear me. Um, so let's start with the printer room and then go wander over to the boxing room. Um, so I've got my reverse microphone. I'm gonna take this off. It's just a little bit unwieldy with the little fuzzy on it. And there's no wind in here. So, um, okay. We're gonna go take a look around and you're gonna um, get a chance to see the printers at work. I'll make sure my audio is gonna switch. Yes. Okay. Um, somebody yell at me if the, if the audio stops working for whatever reason. But I'm gonna carry my iPad chat around and we're gonna take a look at the printers. This is where they are all hard at work. It is loud in here. So let's take a look. Um, so many little printers, so many little printers. Oh, I think it's a little bit quiet. I'm gonna make this a little bit louder. There we go. And that looks better. Audio is fine. Okay. Yeah, so all these little Prusa Mark III, Prusa Mark III printing. This one looks like the Yola Box stand. Yep. This one looks like the Extreme. Mm -hmm. Nice and detailed, detailed work there. Um, the little white spool, the red spool. Another Mark III. This one looks like the regular ATEM mini size. Oh yeah, this is printing a lot slower than when I print on the prototypes. The prototypes I've been printing go way fast. These are much better quality. Um, that is great. Oh, look, they all have little, their own little cameras, so you can keep an eye on them. Uh, another Mark III over here. Oh, this is a Mark II. It's got a Mark III plate. Tricked me. Um, and then that one's doing the black. Oh, you can get four of the black. Mark, uh, oh, this is the Mark II ATEM yes. stand. I see. Um, yes, this is the currently available ATEM mini stand, Mark II. This one is the Yola box, again, of course. Black. Black. Uh, here are all the little wire managers all neatly lined up on the plate. I didn't know those were in orange. Oh, they're not wire managers. They it's just hold back to hold together the aluminum bars. Right, right. Part of the packing material. Mm -hmm. That is something that I learned is that um, sometimes you just have to print your own packing material, essentially. I'll show you. I, I saw that one on the desk. I'll show you when I get back there. Oh, this is a bigger looking printer. Or just that's up that's higher. That's a caribou 3D. Ah, caribou. Uh, hard at work on more of the red Yola box stands. There are so many Mark III's in here. So many of these little printers. Oh my god, there's a whole row down here too. Under here are the minis. These are the wire managers. There we go. Okay, that looks like the black wire managers. These ones are the white wire managers. What are these? Oh, these are making, these are the cheese bars. Cheese I recognize bars. that pattern. These are the little cheese bars that we're now making because we can, <laughs> and uh, 
Okay, more Mark III printers. That looks like the Extreme, original Extreme desktop stand. No, 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 that's the Yolo Box. Oh, Yolo Box desktop stand. Yes. Those are so close to each other when they're halfway done. We have so many of these at work. Um, another one of the Yolo Box cages, and another one of the, that looks like, again, the Yolo Box desktop. And more minis down here. Some of the red wire managers. Oh, here are some of the finished pieces. Factory seconds. Ah, factory seconds. Yeah, you can see some of the imperfections on these. So we, they, these do not go out as no, no. Uh, as part of our ship, our actual production ones. But yeah, you can see there's some of the some marks there. So we may end up with a program for buying them at a discount because, but they're not going out with the main orders because they are not good enough. There's some good quality control here. Um, yeah, so, oh, to the packing room. That's a lot of printers. <laughs> Wait, I want to show you the whole room, the whole room. Slow pan around the whole room, just because it's a lot. There's really a lot in here. Yeah. All right, into the packing room. So, that's where they start, and then... We come around into, oh, it's a lot quieter. Into the packing room. Oh, look at that. A little box full of the little parts. We get it's getting its own label. Beautiful. Okay, we're gonna watch another one of these because I want to see the shovel. I want to see how that works. Uh, we don't have one. For oh, okay, we can't do one. <laughs> I've heard all about this shovel in in the video calls. It's part of the whole process of going going into the box. Uh, but yeah, look at all these little all these little parts here. We've really taken over quite a lot of this. Quite a lot of this. Uh, there's the little rear holders and the little clips. Oh, we've got the nice drawing up on the wall. The Mark II drawing. Oh my gosh, there are so many of these. So many little screws. I have a little drawer of these at, at my studio, but they're not nearly as many as in here. <laughs> Rubber feet. That's the cutter. Ah, okay. So the aluminum, the aluminum bars, they get chopped on this saw. I don't know how long, how long do you buy them in? One meter. One meter. So they come in one meter lengths from whoever makes them. And then they get cut down to the right size here. And, and then, and then they're, they're cut, but the end of it doesn't have threads when you chop it, right? Because it's just a, it's just an aluminum extrusion. So we have to add the threads into it. So there is a special tool. Oh, we're gonna get a live demo of the tapping tool. And now it's got threads. Yeah, same on the other side. That's awesome. So yes, that is how that is how those are made. So many more, so many more little parts. Come on, come on. We're gonna do a shovel for you. Give us, okay. give us a few seconds. Yeah. Oh, and we've got the uh, we've got the little packing foam. It was almost like it was made for it. It was made for it. 
<laughs> it was made for it. Yeah, the shovel is 3D printed too. to hold the tool onto it. That goes into the box here. Oh, yes, the little thank you note, the important part. And this, now you'll see the reason for the shovel. Makes it a perfect fit, perfect fit into that bag. That's one of those oddly satisfying moments. <laughs> it's perfect. Look at that. Oh, and then we get the box as well. So I can't remember now, these boxes, are these a standard size or are these are custom boxes? These are standard. Okay. Yeah. And then we, the we worked out. The, the ones for the new extreme are custom. Okay. And the label. Look at that. And done. Beautiful. Thank you. That's wonderful. Well, that's a lot more professional than um, me just slapping these together at home. So, yeah, I love it. All right. Uh, I guess we go back out here. Yeah. Oh, past some more of the, the new ones on the shelf here. Yeah, and back around to the desk. Let's take a look at the chat. Yes, okay. <clears throat> I wasn't paying attention to the chat during that, so yes, let's see what we've got. The finished product ready to ship. Yeah, that, that was the process. Oh yes, so uh, then another fun fact. So this is the Bratislava. This is like the main one that they're all made at. And then JT is down in Melbourne and he is also doing production from there. So we do actually ship these from uh, two different places and they get made there. So he's got a similar setup. I think it's a little bit smaller, uh, but, but he has a similar situation going where he's printing the parts, uh, doing the quality control, doing the boxing, and then he ships out the ones to Australia, New Zealand, and Asia Pacific. So two different, two different places these are made. The, let's see, what, who, else is, who else is saying stuff? I'm so happy that they're helping tour the facility and processes. The shelf reminds me of that folding board they use for the shirts at Gap. You're right, it totally does, same idea. Uh, JT, or someone asking JT, why not a press adapter for the drill? I think JT answered it down here. It's too long. It's too long to jig it up actually quicker to do it by hand. Yeah, now we're doing that a whole bunch of times. So <laughs> MD says Aaron's in the candy store. Yeah. So many, so many screws and such good organization of all the screws too, which is which is great. Oh, here's a nice comment. I like this factory, very well designed. I agree. Thank I think you. it is. Uh, very well put together, very well organized. Oh, I was going to show you that orange part. 
that is how these come. So when you are, when we're shipping two metal bars, you obviously don't want them to, I just dropped a, dropped a T-nut or drop in out of there. You don't want them to clink around when they're being shipped. So this is just a little separator to hold them at the right distance. And when this goes into the box, then it's solid. So then it's not, um, oh, two of them. Yeah, so with two of them on there, then this is what actually will come in the box. And that way there's no more clink clink in the shipping box. So that is a nice solution to that. And that is another 3D printed part. Just that one's obviously doesn't need to be very high quality because it is just a tiny little piece of shipping material that gets thrown away. But it's, uh, yeah, it's just a little, a little ring. I think it's a clever, clever solution. All right. Can you lock the location of the chat on the yellow box? For example, if you have to go away for something, lock it where the chat was. Good question. Um, I, I don't think it was scrolling when I, when I have it scrolled up, I don't think it auto scrolls. So yeah. Uh, Cyber Shadow says, it's so amazing to see how it's possible to produce small series of specialized products using FDM nowadays. I know, it's really great. Like, honestly, I would not have been able to do this without the fact that these are 3D printers, which are doing not exactly print on demand, obviously, because we want it, you to get it faster than it would take to actually print on demand. But it is certainly um, e easier and cheaper than what you have to do for injection molding, where you're ordering thousands at a time just because the startup costs are so high. Oh, here's, here's a, I can show you this on the yellow box now that uh, I've scrolled up. So the yellow box chat is locked here and you can see how it says new comments down there. So that's how I know that something has appeared since I've scrolled. Okay, I lied. It didn't totally lock because it did just jump, but I, you, you can see I'm up here and, and there's new stuff down there that I need to scroll to. Um, yeah, very cool setup, says Philip. I agree. Thanks. Uh, JT says, and if your box is a little bit tall, you print them taller like a pizza box stand. Uh, Philip asks, just curious, how much of the production line is focused on PK1 products versus everything else they manufacture? I've never asked that, actually. Well, with the uh, new, two new products, it's going to be about 50 to 60%. Oh, wow. Okay. I don't know if you heard that. I think you can probably hear that. He said with the two new products, it'll be about 50% now of the PK-1 products. So yeah, because we've got a pretty full portfolio at this point with the, all the different combos of the different stands and colors. So once you start adding all these color options, it really explodes the amount of time and uh, organization needed for storing the parts in the right boxes and boxing them. So um, that was one of the reasons we're only doing two colors of each of the products instead of all all available in red, black, and white. Uh, Luis says, I received my 8 Mini Pro ISO. Very nice. The only thing that got me unhappy was the disc support that had one screw less, so it does not hold it tight. If there's a missing part, we will fix it. We'll, 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 we'll ship you the missing part. So write in to wherever you bought it from, uh, and then because that's the best way to get it sorted out, and then we'll make sure that we fix that. So um, if something was missing, it, then yeah we will make sure it shows up not missing. MT says, greetings to all the people there. They do a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, wonderful. Okay, so the other, um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about here, what did I want to talk about? Now I've lost my show notes. I didn't make show notes, that's the problem. <laughs> uh, we've done a tour of the of the production room, of the, the, the printing room, the boxing room. That was awesome. Um, taking a look at the two new uh, two new stands. I haven't dropped any links, and I'll fix the description later with all the links. Oh, I did want to uh, talk a little bit about my morning wandering around Bratislava and show you a couple of uh, fun fun shots I got. Uh, so this is, it's like 4 p.m. right now here, but this morning I was walking around town and walked up to the castle and got a chance to use the DJI Mini, the drone, and it was a lot of fun. And um, apparently here it's a lot, it, you can, all you need is like the, the simple certificate 
baseline knowledge test thing, and for the small drones, there's nothing else required, which is nice. So uh, the the castle was like deserted. There was like nobody there, so it was perfect. It basically just meant that I didn't have to worry about like crowds or anything because there was just nobody there. So uh, let me make sure this audio is going to work, and uh, I stitched together a little short clip of uh, some of the shots that I did from from the castle this morning. So here we go. That was fun. <laughs> yeah, I had a lot of fun with that. That was a couple of a couple of trips up with the drone around the castle, nearby in the castle in the gardens. Uh, there was really nobody around. It was great. It was so nice. It was only like it was like ten or eleven a.m. too, so it wasn't like it was that early in the morning. Uh, Eric says that's some mighty dramatic classical music there. I'm really compliments on those long drone takes. Thanks. Yeah, music of course is from Artlist, so link for that is down below, I believe. And uh, yeah, I'm very, very new to drone uh, filming, but I had, uh, I was definitely trying to get the longer, longer takes. And this was, if you look at the raw footage, it's a, it's a complete mess of like jerky movements and as I'm, you know, adjusting the camera, but then I get it in a spot and then do a slow move. So like a slow drop or a slow pan or a slow tilt up or whatever. And then I just grab those little bits out of the video once I land. Um, one of those actually went a little bit out over the water to get one of those shots of the castle and I was like looking at the drone up there like I hope it comes back because <laughs> uh, it's got the footage in it and I don't want to lose a drone uh, but yeah that was fun it was a fun little trip so yeah um, <laughs> JT says what not a single take I mean there were three technically three takes in there uh, with lots of junk footage between them I'll just say that um, it was a lot of fun. So yeah, been enjoying the time here. I'm gonna be here for a little bit longer and then back to uh, back to Vienna for for my actual job. Um, this was a nice little detour out to Bratislava. All right, I think we're gonna wrap it up here. Um, Eric says DJI mini drone footage finally. Yes, I'm very glad to be able to share some of that today. So that was nice. Uh, <laughs> Peter says. Um, Lost one in the in the river and one in the Grand Canyon. Ugh, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully I can. This will last a while. Uh, yeah. Thankfully, I did not lose this one in the in the river. So okay, we're gonna wrap it up here. Um, thanks everybody for joining. And uh, <laughs> oh, thanks for the super chat, Keith. I just saw that uh, picture of your face when that box closed. Um, the camera was pointing the wrong way, sorry. It was, it was very nice. It was very nice to see it all come together. So, yeah. And thanks for the super chat. Um, Bailey says, you might have to tour the Melbourne factory. I, if I make it down there, I definitely will. I'm going to go visit for sure. And we'll take a look around there as well and see what we, see what that one looks like. Um, don't know when that's going to be. Who knows? Um, we'll see if I can make it this year. Possibly. Um, otherwise, I don't know. I will try. Um, thank you for sharing. Yes. And thank you for joining. All right. With that, we are going to wrap it up here. Thank you all for tuning into this special edition live stream. It was a lot of fun. Nice to see the two are here. I'm actually going to spend a little bit more time here and film some more around here while the printers are still busy and working and Maybe I'll have another little short video to edit and share next week when I'm back um, back in Portland from my normal location. 
and how do I um, how do I end how do I end on the yellow box? I guess I'm gonna put my, put up my logo screen. All right, thanks everybody for joining, and bye.